name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. To us a child is born. And the government will be on his shoulders. Sing to the Lord a new song. Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. together this morning. We sing and speak about peace on earth, yet because of our brokenness and sin, we don't experience peace. As we celebrate the gift of our Prince of Peace, wrapped in swaddling cloths and lying in a manger, let us go to our Lord and confess our brokenness and sin. Have mercy on me, O God, according to your steadfast love. According to your abundant mercy, blot out my transgressions. Wash me thoroughly from my iniquity, and cleanse me from my sin. For I know my transgressions, and my sin is ever before me. Against you, you only, have I sinned, and done what is evil in your sight so that you may be justified in your words and blameless in your judgment. Behold, I was brought forth in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. We are born sinners, yet God gives us the gift of Jesus, who was born to be our Savior. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation for all people, training us to renounce ungodliness and worldly passions and to live self-controlled, upright, and godly lives in the present age, waiting for our blessed hope, the appearing of the glory of our great God and Savior Jesus Christ, who gave himself for us to redeem us from all lawlessness and to purify for himself a people for his own possession who are zealous for good works. At the command of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit.
Lord be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that the birth of your only begotten Son in the flesh may set us free from the bondage of sin. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Please be seated. The Old Testament reading for this Christmas day is from Isaiah chapter 52. How beautiful upon the mountains are the feet of him who brings good news, who publishes peace, who brings good news of happiness, who publishes salvation, who says to Zion, your God reigns. The voice of your watchmen, they lift up their voice. Together they sing for joy. For eye to eye they see the return of the Lord to Zion. Break forth together into singing, you waste places of Jerusalem, for the Lord has comforted his people. He has redeemed Jerusalem. The Lord has bared his holy arm before the eyes of all the nations, and all the ends of the earth shall see the salvation of our God. This is the word of the Lord. Epistles from Hebrews chapter 1. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son, whom he appointed the heir of all things, through whom also he created the world. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature, and he upholds the universe by the word of his power. 
after making purification for sins, he sat down at the right hand of the majesty on high, having become as much superior to angels as the name he has inherited is more excellent than theirs. For to which of the angels did God ever say, you are my son, today I have begotten you? Or again, I will be to him a father, and he shall be to me a son. And again, when he brings the firstborn into the world, he says, let all God's angels worship him. This is the word of the Lord. Please stand. Holy Gospel according to St. John, the first chapter. In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. He was in the beginning with God. All things were made through him, and without him was not anything made that was made. In him was life, and the life was the light of men. The light shines in the darkness, and the darkness has not overcome it. There was a man sent from God whose name was John. He came as a witness to bear witness about the light, that all might believe through him. He was not the light, but came to bear witness about the light. The true light, which enlightens everyone, was coming into the world. He was in the world, and the world was made through him, yet the world did not know him. He came to his own, and his own people did not receive him. But to all who did receive him, who believed in his name, he gave the right to become children of God, who were born not of blood, nor of the will of the flesh, nor of the will of man, but of God. And the word became flesh and dwelt among us, and we have seen his glory, glory as of the only Son from the Father, full of grace and truth. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
joy to the world, the Lord is come. The text is the epistle lesson from Hebrews, read to you a few moments ago. Please be seated. It may seem disappointing to you that the appointed lessons for Christmas Day don't include that familiar account from Luke chapter 2. Instead, these lessons seek to tell us what this miracle of incarnation, of God in human flesh, truly means to us today. We've heard the account from Luke dozens, hundreds of times during our lifetimes, It's retold every Christmas Eve in every children's program, every school program, every family gathering. We've learned it like a history lesson. The decree of Caesar Augustus. The journey to Bethlehem. Mary and Joseph and no room in the inn. And the story of the angels and the shepherds. And of course the baby wrapped in swaddling clothes lying in a manger. We could recite that story from memory. And we could easily win a Christmas trivia contest. But is that all we really want to do on this Christmas Day? Not only is the story the same every year, but so is the way that we commemorate it with all of our traditions. The very same services and the same carols. The same decorations here at church and back at home, the same family gatherings, the same Christmas menu, all the way that Christmas is supposed to be, the way we've done it every other year until this year. This year is different. This year we can't do it the way we've always done it before. We've uninvited the family. We won't all be together Christmas dinner won't be the same. So have we canceled Christmas? Christmas isn't ours to cancel. It isn't ours to do. Christmas is God's gracious gift to us. And besides, we don't just want to commemorate it the way we always have every other year. We want to celebrate it, to really celebrate it today. We need to celebrate it the way little children do. For them, it's, it's not a history lesson at all, but an ever-up-to-date, always-contemporary current event. Watch the way they play with the nativity scene. They always go right for the baby Jesus. And they pick him up in their arms, they carry him off with them. It's the first piece of the nativity set that always goes missing. Right? Listen to the songs that they sing. They sing and celebrate Jesus' birthday like it's really happening right now today. And the hymn which we just sang echoes it as well. Joy to the world, the Lord is come. Not has come, not past tense, not history, but present tense. A current event. Not a commemoration of how we've always done it in the past, but a brand new celebration of how it is today. That's the point to the prologue, the opening words of the epistle to the Hebrews. Long ago, at many times and in many ways, God spoke to our fathers by the prophets. But in these last days, he has spoken to us by his Son. Long ago, in the past, throughout history, God spoke. He spoke through prophets from Moses to Malachi. God spoke to sinful human beings. That in itself is truly amazing. God didn't remain distant, far above looking down on sinners, giving them the silent treatment. No, God spoke to each generation just exactly what that generation needed to hear. Since the day that he first walked with Adam and Eve in the garden, God spoke and revealed his will to them. He told them his laws. 
He talked about his plans. He made all kinds of promises to them. God spoke about a Savior who would one day come, of the forgiveness of all of their sins, of a life with him and his kingdom forever. God spoke long ago, in the past, in history. But now, in these last days, God has spoken and God continues to speak to us through a son. Jesus is God's full, complete, simple, and final revelation. Jesus fulfills all of those prophetic words and all the plans and all the promises. Jesus sums up everything God has ever said to us. That's the point that John was making when he said, the Word became flesh and dwelt among us, full of grace and truth. Listen once again to the way the book of Hebrews describes him. He is the radiance of the glory of God and the exact imprint of his nature. And he upholds the universe by the word of his power, After making purification for our sins, he sat down at the right hand of majesty on high. The prophets spoke for God. They were his messengers. God breathed into them the words that he wanted them to speak to human beings. But Jesus is the Son of God. God himself has come down to earth. God entered humanity. God invaded our time. Now life can never, ever be the same. Since that first Christmas, life needs to become so much bigger for us because now it has to include a little baby in a manger that the entire universe couldn't contain. The wonder of those little lips that had once cried out into the darkness, let there be light, and there was light. The mystery of those little hands that set the stars in their places in the heavens. The miracle of that little face that looked down in sadness when Adam and Eve first fell into sin. God incarnate. God in human flesh, the Lord is come, joy to the world today. Because now God speaks to us. Today he reveals just how much he truly loves us. The yard signs in our neighborhood said, Jesus is the reason for the season. But scripture says, you... You and I are really the reason for this season. And it's not because we've been so good, not because we're nice, not because we're so deserving, but precisely because we've been so naughty, we've been so bad, so wicked, so evil, so sinful. The angel told those lowly shepherds today in the town of David, a Savior, a Savior from sin has been born for you. He's Christ the Lord. For you, God is speaking to you today. And he speaks to you not in a demanding, threatening, terrifying voice that you and I deserve to hear. But he speaks to us in the gentle little voice of a baby. And he says, I love you. And I forgive you. And I am with you always. There's a picture making its way around the internet. It's a a beautiful nativity scene. Mary and Joseph and the baby Jesus lying in a manger. But this artist has done something interesting with light and shadows. And there is a distinct shadow in this image. As the light floods across the scene, 
the shadow of a cross clearly falls over the manger. It reminds us that Jesus came to die on a cross. He came to die for you. A Savior is born for you. You are the reason for this season. That's the good news of great joy. For the Lord is come. And so today we celebrate. There's an old rhyme that says, At Christmas play and make good cheer, for Christmas comes but once a year. Just once a year? Just today? What about tomorrow? You know, the day after Christmas is usually one of the busiest days of the year as people make all of their returns. They return all of the stuff they didn't want or need or that doesn't fit them just right. It'll be interesting to see what tomorrow brings. Will you and I return to life the way it was? Like Cinderella returning to all of her rags and her drudgery? Will Christmas be for us nothing more than a history lesson? A few years ago, there was an editorial that was entitled, The Other Side of Christmas. It's the story of a man who was going home from work on Christmas Eve. He was overjoyed because he had just received his Christmas bonus. As he's driving along, he sees a boy fall through the ice in a pond next to the road. So he slams on the brakes, jumps out of the car, rips off his coat, crawls out onto the ice, and it breaks, and he falls through. And he struggles and struggles, but he rescues that little boy and brings him back safely to shore. It's a beautiful Christmas story of someone sacrificing, giving his life potentially for another that isn't where the story ended because now the man is wet and cold and shivering all over and as he arrives at shore he goes quickly for his coat to wrap it around him and as he does he realizes that while he was out risking his life for this little boy someone in the crowd watching all of this had lifted his wallet and his Christmas bonus was gone the editorial continued with all kinds of stories like that. Like the department store Santa Claus, who instead of stuffing his costume with pillows, stuffed it with merchandise that he was shoplifting from the store. The point of the editorial was that Christmas spirit doesn't fill the real world, that Christmas doesn't change anything. Is that the world that we'll return to tomorrow? I don't like hearing about stuff like that. And I disagree with the editorial's premise. I want to believe that there is something lasting. I want to believe that Christmas truly changes us. I want to believe that we who celebrate the birth of our Savior today will never be the same. For our celebration of Christmas today points us ahead to a Christmas that's still to come. A time when every day will be like Christmas. Today, God is speaking to you through this divine service, through familiar ancient words. It's the message of his love and his forgiveness for you. Today, God is opening heaven once again and giving you his own son, in humble bread and wine, the very body and blood of Jesus given for you for the forgiveness of all your sins. And this is just a foretaste of the Christmas dinner when all of the family will be gathered together at his table. Today we're singing familiar carols and we're looking forward to a day when we will join the heavenly host and sing like we've never sung before in joy that will never, ever end. Today, this Christmas day, God is speaking to you. 
He says, joy. Joy to the world for your Lord is come. Amen. And may the peace of God, which surpasses all our understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. Our service continues with our confession of faith. Would you rise and speak together the Nicene Creed? be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. For in the mystery of the Word made flesh, you have given us a new revelation of your glory, that seeing you in the person of your Son, we may be drawn to the love of those things which are not seen. Therefore, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and saying, Remember us in your kingdom and teach us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ, in the night in which he was betrayed, took bread, and when he gave it thanks, he broke it and gave it to the disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you, this do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also he took the cup after supper, and when he had given thanks, he gave it to them also, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of sins. This do as often as you drink it 
in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you always.
please stand. The body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen and preserve you in body and soul to life everlasting. Depart in peace. Let us pray. We give thanks to you, Almighty God, that you have refreshed us through this salutary gift, and we implore you that of your mercy you would strengthen us through the same in faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord make his face to shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace.